uh, Chirajito has a win rate of 9%. Oh. And 12 OB has a win rate of 51. Chirajito doesn't have that many games under his belt. He has two wins and 20 losses. Yikes. Everybody else has like several hundred, almost a thousand in their uh, win loss. Oh, and they're only 1100 ELO, huh? God damn. <laughs> I guess that's what 50% will do to you. Hindustanis and Magyars versus Poles and Mongols. And the Hindustani okay. player is the one that has the low win rate. And here we go, and uh, we're not playing Mega Random. Fooled you, it's Bog Islands. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> oh, God, I hate Bog Islands. What is? This is like Arena Minus. <laughs> so yeah, Bog Islands is a random map type where it's basically this, where it's all shallows and pretty much, uh, oh, you even start with a transport ship to scout with, and uh, if players know what's up, they're going to be fighting with mostly Navy, uh, so, right, let's go banana. yeah. let's go our hero Banana. Uh, so I think the Hindustanis are probably the best Navy Civ here, I'm not too familiar with any of these Civs as... Uh, Navy Civs. I the only time Navy's come up for the Mongols in competitive play, as far as I've seen, is all the way back when uh, Bay was a going concern. Uh, shout out to Pants. Mongols got picked on that map quite a bit just because of the large amount of hunt further up the map away from the bay. But God, there's um, actually not a whole lot of food on the map either. There's a couple of fish piles, but they're all yeah. so spread out. Yeah, 3,600 food on the map here. Like, like you gotta dock the middle, like, ASAP, right? Yeah, I mean, just like you would in Mediterranean. Um, the only thing is you can only dock on your land, right? So, the thing oh. is, if you lose water control on this map, oh, if you screwed. lose water control early, you're screwed. Because, like, what are you gonna do? Build a castle with the five stone blocks that are in your main? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really look like there's a whole lot on the outside either. There's like random gold tiles. Maybe they're all two tiles basically though. Yeah, I count forty-four tiles of stone worth fifteen and a half thousand stone. Oh, and yeah, I didn't realize this, but you have to uh, lumber camp the outside tree line because you don't have wood near your base. Nope, which means, uh, God, I hope we get uh, demo, demo ships. ships in people's wood lines. That's oh, classic. No. But yeah, fooled you, it's <laughs> bog. Uh, yellow's getting loom early on 10 villages. Uh, Lower and is hard, bam. So who did you say had Cherigino had the 9% win rate? Yes, well, the 20 win, or 2 wins and 20 losses. Well, I hope, uh... I hope, uh... <laughs> L2 lob. I don't know if that's supposed to be blob. That'd be really cool if it was Blob and the 12 was like a stylized B, but... Or not. Oh, that's right. Blue is on the... Yeah, three, dude, I want... Three, three boards, though. Like, three boards, that's... that's pretty good. Oh, wow, yeah. Wow, that's, uh, that's, uh... Amazon tunnel numbers right that's there. That's a non-zero amount of boards. So far, it looks like villager counts are basically even. Yeah, so it's always interesting when you get handed a water map in Mega Random. Usually Mega Random doesn't offer you that much fish. It'll offer you water, but it doesn't offer you fish in those waters. So uh, if you're going to pick Civ for Mega Random, you are most likely going to see like Hindustanis, Magyars, like Poles, Mongols. Those are all fantastic picks for Mega Random because most of the time you'll get... Uh, like, if you were to have a sliding scale of land maps to water maps, and, like, in the middle is hybrid, usually it's, like, a 20-80, 30-70 mix of our water hero, and land. Our hero with the first dock. Nice. Oh. Wait, is that not a... Is that an ocean fish on that shore tile? It is, and it's just within range to be fished. Look at that. No shit. Okay, well... Oh, yeah, I do no, believe well, fishing boats... Yeah, I do believe fishing... Oh, because he's about to be housed this way. I do believe fishing boats are faster for deep fish. And I don't believe there's any shore fish whatsoever on the map. Oh yeah, it all so. does look like deep fish, huh? 
Uh, another important thing is that nobody started with Scout Cavalry. They've just been the regular horses. I say yep. regular, but the special horse instance that you can get a Mega Random. Horses and transport ships. Uh -huh. Oh, I just realized this is the kind of map I could do what I was trying to do with the Siege Tower. I can oh, totally, yeah? I can totally rush a transport ship full of petards into somebody's face. Uh -huh. oh, or oh, you no. could just use a demo ship and it'll cost Hobby. less, significantly less, and achieve the same thing. Oh, when a transport ship goes down, if it's in shallows, does it drop the uh, units off, or do they all die? I think they just all die. Oh, okay. Well, shit. Yeah, that one's working. Yeah, well. so... Yeah, that's what makes a transport ship, transport drop so risky if there's water control involved. Oh, blue with, I love blue slumber line. Mongo player, first one to go up. No surprises there, thanks to their hunt bonus. It doesn't even look like they've been working on their hunt. Still got yeah, the uh, I th boar counts as hunt though, so oh, we'll gather food okay. from that faster. I did not realize that. I have to start playing the Mongols more. They are top tier for a reason. They have uh, one of the most ridiculously fast uh, oh my God. dark age uptimes in the I game. Didn't realize this, but... Oh yeah, because Blue has a uh, fishing ship, so he's still getting. I was gonna say his population just like spiked. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, and everybody in the game is now up to is getting out of uh, Dark Age. Uh, Green is housed right now, and that's probably the reason why he ticked up in the first place. And he still hasn't constructed a house yet. So I really hope he realizes that, or he's going to incur quite a bit of idle TC time here, which would suck because everyone's doing an amazing job on idle TC time. Oh, no one's lost the villagers so far. Rush, maybe? Oh, well. Two green militia over here by red. Oh, yeah, but what is the militia going to... Oh, there's three militia here. Oh, so, yeah, just a straight up... Just a straight up drush here, and it looks like they're going to go pick on... Uh... Nope. They're going to pick on the wood line. There may be. I think they're holding back, because red hasn't spotted them... Yet. Oh, oh, oh here comes no, one green in. militia. That single militia's moving in. Now, this is a huge mistake, because red could just fight back against this. Red could just fight back against this. Red could just... Red could red just... Could just... <laughs> okay. Okay. Now remember, if you have Loom, villagers will win a one-on-one -on -one fight against Militia. But uh, Red doesn't know that, apparently. He's just like, oh, they got clubs, and we don't. <laughs> Although, I'd much rather not get hit by a machete than a club. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, th I feel like getting hit by a stick is a lot better than getting hit by a knife. Blue was the first player on the game, Banana Our Man, getting fire ships out. Oh yeah, fire ships are really rough on this. They can hit quite a bit. Oh, and look at this! Green is using the scout horse here to block the villager, and Green is going to pick up first blood here. Oh, hell yeah. Let's hell green. yes. Let's go green, dude. Now this sucks because I'm in. I'm at a. Uh, I'm at a cross of faith here because bananas are man, but man, I want Cherujito to pick up a win. And uh, if you want to pick, if you want to pick up a win, you can't have your teammate go villager down. Wait, why did he? Oh, Cherujito rang the town bell to kill somebody scout. No, he doesn't know about alt garrisoning. Oh god. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Uh, yo, cheer, Gino, first a castle. Yo, fast castle? Where you at? Off of no. He's just he's getting double bit now as he's taking up. Oh no. He does have twenty seven. He might just be doing the basic. I I played the advanced tutorial and learned how to fast boom. He did have three boars. Oh, blue moving around with some fight with a fire ship now. Looking at cheer, Gino. Yeah. No, I don't think so, but if that fire ship finds that wood line, people could be in dire situation here as uh, it looks like Green's Drush was fought off as Green is now making the switch to archers. That's a very standard play for the Mongols is uh, Drush into arch or men at arms archers, and then all those upgrades you're getting for your archers in Feudal Age will go nicely into your switch into uh, Mangadai and Castle Age. He had to have seen the scout cab, though. Like, he's, he's got to do something about these scout cab that are coming in. 
Uh, who, banana? Uh, red is going down towards green. Yeah, okay. So we got a small scout raid here. Now, I believe that is what fought off. Now, I'm, I'm sad I missed it, but green yeah. does have this scouted. He's got pikemen in reserve right now. He's got two pikemen and his main wood line there. If both of his wood lines are fenced off and good to go. So, I don't think these raids will pick up anything too valuable. And uh, with one of them weak like that... Um... I don't yeah, know. I was thinking with one of them weak like that, the archers could probably fend that off, but it looks like he's moving in with the archers. No, yeah, you want to attack with the archers, and you're probably going to keep the spearmen behind oh, no. it. No, he's Is moving he out with the spearmen. Oh, okay, he didn't do what I wanted to do. Okay. Oh, was he? Did you think he was going to load to the transport and then go and then into the wood like off in that one That'd tile be... that was open? Yeah. That'd be very funny. So we got a couple archers here. So I think, yeah, these scouts are going to kill these archers because they're coming in now this is not nothing red if red places himself between himself and green he can close off any other line. in red's wood line oh yeah oh blue and yellows okay sorry i'm mixing colors your cross map here uh red might be done for here with this archer rush uh red is not responding with any towers right now uh however green is losing people to the town center so if green moves up to this wood line oh there we go defensive tower there on red's wood line they begin scouting around now will green i don't, don't think green will be able to deny this there's just too many villagers but if he gets a couple of kicks he'll be laughing about this yeah this tower will go up i'm surprised green is not oh he's gonna go underneath the tower oh that's mean Yellow is trying to help out Red any way he can. Here comes some camels. Uh, interesting choice. Uh, oh, right, the Hindustanis. That's all they get from their... That's not all they get from their favorite. Blue is trying to surround Yellow with the fire ships. Red has some more scout cab on the way. Uh, looking at the kill death here. Uh, green is 14 and 14. Uh, yellow. There you go. Now everyone is bunched up there. Oh, I hear the fire. Oh, the fire ships are trying to kill some of the camels. Yep. The camels are zero, zero, uh, creatures here, and yellow doesn't have any horse armor for them just yet. Blue is still stalking around with fire ships. Unfortunately, Offside. these towers are not going to do a whole lot to the fire ships. Fire ships in the line again. Mm -hmm. now, those fire ships are going to destroy that tower for free. And red has been saved for now, but his uh, kill death is not looking super great. Although, although green's oh. kill death is 15. What's the eco KD? Yellow has Towers. so many villagers not doing anything. Oh no. Oh yeah, he's trying to fend off the fire ships, and he loses another villager here, and it is, it's not looking good for uh, Team Evens here, for uh, Terragito and uh, L2 Lob. Oh man, that's a death ball of our ships. Scout right here on Positron is too, uh, I2 OB tries to get some damage in, but he's going to be chased away by the Spearmen. More farms going down, and, uh... Oh, yellow with the yeah. first, uh, second DC game. There we go. Blue is getting another TC down as well. I would have liked to see that TC further up next to that bowl, but that's just me being picky. As for Actually, Blue's TC, that's the, gonna be right on his main. Looking at the idle TC time, uh, odd team's actually doing better than... Yeah, and like, look at that right now, Odd Team, even though Green has been doing a pretty good job at applying pressure, look at this, Yellow is fighting back, killing off the outpost that they started with here, but uh, we really need to see Yellow go into an option that deals with uh, Spearmen. 
Uh, blue making knights against camels. Let's see how that goes out for him. Yeah. And yeah, like, we thought green was the best player here. Like, uh, uh, great that. feudal play. Another attack wave by green going, going out here against yep. uh, red. But, uh, yeah, the numbers, uh, the villagers, uh, 83 eco to 79 eco. Uh, military scores are a bit even. I really, yellow cannot lose these camels right now by going into the TC like that. And yellow really needs blacksmith upgrades. Like, oh my goodness, does yellow need blacksmith upgrades. Why are you going under the TC? What are you doing, yellow? Ah! Meanwhile, to the north in Yellow's main, <laughs> we're chasing off four knights here, or five knights here, trying to get a counterattack, but... Now, I think these knights are still going to repel off the panels here, just because of pure numbers. Yep, just like that. So, uh, we got knights running around Yellow's main. Oh my gosh, it's, it's pure chaos here, as uh, Cherogene was getting some good KDE in here. As for Eco KD, Blue has killed two villagers but lost two villagers. Uh, Green has an impressive eight villager kills with only four villager losses. Uh, Cherujito has killed two villagers but lost three, and Red has killed four but lost eight. So on the whole, uh, Banana and Pazifon, who uh, I believe has gone under the radar thus far as man, this lot is full of great names. Yellow picking up the castle. Yeah. So castles are integral to, uh, especially late game Hindustani play. Um, both of their unique techs are quite good, but uh, one in particular, their hand cannon ears having plus two range. Holy shit! Nine range hand can or uh, nine range hand cannons. Just give sniper rifles, dude. Yeah. And uh, that's definitely what we're gonna. I hope we, we see that here. Uh, as well, it gives Hindustani's access to the Gulam. Uh, basically a, uh, Indian, <laughs> uh, man, I am, I'm having a stroke. Yeah, Eagle Warrior, thank you. Information retrieval is not working tonight, apparently. Uh, there's been no reason to go blue on yes, just sir. yet. Another right here from yellow, as we got Wait. monks out from blue. Yeah, I was gonna say, I see those arrows. Yeah, and the monk's gonna be underneath the town center, and these monks... Oh, will they get the convert? Nope, yellow is just out of there right now. So what is yellow going to- And he gets he gets two conversions there, that's backbreaking for yellow. As the last player finally enters in- Oh, red was in cat or feudal age this whole time. Oh, oh dear, I did not account for that. Green should have castled, like, on their island. Like, no, I agree with this. Like, really? especially since, well, yeah, you build a castle to build up your Megadite numbers as Mongols. And you don't want an offensive castle to do that because then you're creating enemies in their eco. So if it all goes south, you lose, like, your biggest unit creator. No, like, look at this castle's guarding. So not only do you have the town center there, it's also guarding, uh, like, all of your valuable gold resources. And you do not need your gold to be under attack right now, especially when Magadai are, like, just hands down your best unit here. So, I agree with the defensive castle here from Green. And if Green gets the Magadai up, he's continuing pressure here with his Feudal Age army. Red is getting a defensive castle up to protect his secondary gold and his farmers. Uh, Green hasn't seen it yet as he goes to town on the Red Farmers. He sees it now, but it's way too late, and we're gonna get a couple kills here. Some spearmen go down. Hey, hey, well, if you uh, were sad that you weren't going to see an offensive castle drop here to help, just look to the east side of the map here and you might be happy about it. Yeah, a little bit. I don't like this castle drop. No, <laughs> but I don't. That's I, just would, me. I would like that a little bit further back. Not even like, yeah, like on the, on the, on the golden gold stone. Right yeah. yeah, and that, that would allow you to build up a navy. Like. Namaste. And another thing is right now, like... Uh, at this sort of lower elo we're playing at right now, this might get- this town center might get denied? There we go, Terrigio. But look at all those Hindustani camels. And again, no melee armor on them again. Terrigio was completely forgotten about their blacksmith upgrades. In fact, I don't even- there, okay, they do have a blacksmith. 
But that's one thing I like about green. Like, green has not forgot about their blacksmith upgrades at all. They are fully maxed out right now with their uh, archer range and archer damage. And look at those monks in the back for blue, but unfortunately those are going to get picked off. This forward castle, red is... Yellow sending out gulongs. Or at least, uh, yeah, three gulongs there. Counter castle by yellow, but uh, that's not going to go up, unfortunately. But who knows? Oh, the castle gets denied by yellow. Let's go! Cherigito, Cherigito. That's fantastic. To be fair, <laughs> it's a bit of a do or die situation for this castle drop. Yeah, I, as we said, we did not agree with that castle drop whatsoever. And it looks like Blue has set the rally point for all of their military buildings just forward here. Uh, what are these fire ships doing? Oh god. <laughs> Red is stockpiling up knights. Uh, makes sense as the Magyars. I hope we see Magyar Hussars. Uh, Magyar Hussars would be a really good idea to get into anyways as your trash unit because they deal extra bonus damage against, uh, siege and gunpowder, I believe. Uh, and the Mongols do have exceptional siege, especially if they tech into it, get drills. Drills is incredibly good, unique tech to make everything faster. And Green has quite a large number of Mangadai. He's at 12 right now. He doesn't have ballistics researched yet, so they're not at full power. And I don't believe... Oh man, I wish I memorized their, uh, health, but I don't believe they have... Uh, bloodlines research either. I don't think I see a single stable here from Green. They can't forget that cavalry archers are also affected by husbandry and bloodlines. But Red is going to get a second defensive castle going to protect his two forward golds, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Green does with this raiding force. What's up? Okay, Try yeah. To deal with the, uh, pipe. I don't know if Skirms are the play. I think, like, if you're going to do an anti-archer uh, unit as the Hindustanis, like, you go Gulongs, right? Like, I think teching into I'll be, I'll, Skirms the, is... If the Gulongs run in, won't they just die to the knights, though? That's why you have camels. That's why you have I one guess. of the better camels in the game. Like... <laughs> So remember, those guys, those babies seem 25% faster as we have a three-player duel here as the Mangadai are being chased away by camels and knights. Now, the Mangadai are going to absolutely shred the camels, but the knights might be a slightly different story with their higher HP and pierce armor. Now, again, the green does not have a uni up. They have not researched ballistics. Yellow doesn't know about Q. Oh, yeah? Let me just say that. Because he's just running past the Mangadai and getting... <laughs> I think that's on purpose. I think yellow is just trying to be a nuisance and just tie up the Mangadai here. Oh, yeah, okay. like, finally, ballistics on the way here for green. Oh, and these camels. Look at this macro. Mm, I don't know about that. You, you have two castles there? If you're worried about archers, just go blue arms. Oh god, what is this? Oh, those are green pikemen. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, red hit the town of the I just heard a chime oh, yeah? and everybody ran in, ran outside. <laughs> well, red has a... Yeah, red has quite a large amount of knights with their maximum damage. And again, yeah. yellow with their no armor camels. Like, yellow still hasn't researched any cavalry yeah. armor right now. So, uh, their camels are just going to get absolutely shredded by Green Mangadai, and they have been. Yellow's no longer... Yellow is now camelless. There's more Mangadai on the way for Green. Yellow! Uh, first one to imp here. That's going to be fantastic news for him as he gets another TC going down here. Oh, uh, so... Uh, I wouldn't say it's like, uh, you know, the Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 excitement meter. I don't think we got... I don't think we hit a 12, but... Uh, you know, we we have a game here. I'm a little bit surprised nobody's like built forward buildings and tried to take the first time in the 
Like, well, we saw blue. Yeah, we saw blue try that, but like it wasn't very well protected or thought out, and yellow did an amazing job at fighting that back. Uh, what I am, I don't think of it that much of a surprise since everybody hates naval combat in this game, but like Bog Islands, like anything that comes out of your oh. docks you say upgraded. Likes naval combat. Blue has four galleys over here shooting red oh, and yeah, and red is going to lose the stone here, but <laughs> the moment the stone runs out, the galleys attack here, and the knights are going to come in. But like, if you go hard into navy, like, no land unit can deal with that if everything's properly oh, upgraded. Bell, yeah. Dinga Dingus, Manga Dai are rushing through Red's eco now. Red is completely shut down. Uh, by the way, relics on the map, there's still seven relics on the map by my count. And I don't think anybody has picked up a single relic. Uh, Red has one relic. All right, I'm keeping my eye on this Mangadai versus Knight fight. As those two are shuffling about. So many Knights coming in here. Is the Pikelin are moving in for green as well? Now, it's interesting to see Red being stubborn and refusing to put down archery ranges for skirmishers when they have this many... Uh, Mangadai showing. Another castle coming out here. Yellow has skirmishers, so uh, I would love to see Gulams against Mangadai. I actually don't think I've ever seen that matchup happen because usually in most competitive games I've seen, either Mongols or Hindustanis or both are banned in the pick and ban phase, so that matchup doesn't really come up in the Red is. Yep. So red has to have this defensive castle move up, and that's pretty much going to force green. Green is in Imperial Age. Everyone is in the middle of ticking up here. And it's all going to come down to how the Trevor pans out at this point now. Such a privilege is coming up. Yeah, the Keystone uh, tech for the, the banana there. Oh my god, it's like holes with a low time, like you get a castle up and you go to get the facility in castle Oh my god, are you a mess. And yeah, we saw the numbers in, I believe we saw the numbers in the even team's favor for Terradito and uh, L2 Ob. But uh, yeah, I think the KD at this point, if we look at it here, yeah, kill deaths for green, 57 to 45, but... Banana is not doing too hot, actually. Banana is 36 and 61. And Cherujito's not doing too bad himself, but, like, Green has the units and Green has the map control. Look how he's starting to build uh, units in the mid right now. He's going to have uh, rams here in a moment. Um, he has rams down right now, so it's just a matter of time if he can get those protected. He's going to get the pikemen in the ram, so they go super, super, super fast. Now yellow does have the uh, strength fully upgraded, but again, you don't really want to build your production buildings in the face of the enemy that's hitting you. So that archer range will be denied. As here comes the ram brigade, and three more rams on the way, I think. No, nope, those are villagers there. Knock knock. So red is still stubbornly sticking to knights, and those are going to be shredded by the pikemen. If you are red, like, oh, skirms here, skirms and knights are what you want right now. Look how fast those rams go. <laughs> yep, cavaliers getting uh, attacked up by these uh, heavy camel riders now. We don't have imp camels just yet, but uh, against the pools, we want to get imp camels as soon as possible. But uh, I don't think red is going to mount last much longer, and if red surrenders, I think yellow is also going to tap out, which sucks, because yellow's played not bad! His yellow's played better than his win rate says, but yeah, again... Yeah, I was saying, it might just be a classic case of my teammate keeps sabotaging me. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, not to Red's credit, Red ha didn't immediately kill over. Like, Green did put up some significant pressure there in Feudal Age with the, with the Drush into the Archers, and Red didn't fully die there, but it is clear that Green is the most skilled player in this lobby. So, again, look at that group of Mangadai. Like, they haven't been really been challenged at all during the course of this game. Apart from, like, a couple of knights that have been microed down, Yellow tried their hardest by sending over a couple of elite skirmishes to buy red time to put up that second castle, but... Yeah, especially now that Blue has sent up Cavaliers to deal with Yellow Skirms, Blue might be leaving here quite soon. Uh, Yellow is fighting back, though. Uh... Now, I agree with this wholeheartedly, so now that uh, the Hindustani player going full camels, you immediately go into... Oh, I, I heard them. I saw them for a little bit. I thought uh, Banana was going into Obooks, which would have been in a fantastic play right now, but I guess he did see the Hindustani hand cannoneers coming in, which would have absolutely eviscerated them. goes down. I'm keeping my eye on this yellow and blue fight to the east here. Let me know if anything cool happens with green. green. I'm just looking at the mini map right now. Green is absolutely dominating mid control between red and green. So. Unfortunately, yellow is not keeping up production of imperial camels. Red is still only at 79 villagers. Uh, however, red is doing fantastic with 117. Bang. Now, yellow needs a lot of gold to keep his unit composition up, because he is going... Uh, oh, he gets gold mining there right now. Oh my god, I look over to the green versus red, and that's yep. a shit ton of siege rams. And look at that, you can... I don't even need to check if he has drills research. Look at the motor. Uh -oh. They got... They got the fucking 800cc Honda engine in there. And yeah, Mangadai siege ram... Uh, Pikeman, this is all... This is Mangadai.jpg here. And yeah, these seed rams are gonna be picked off though. We got Red Builders repairing the castle and it's a huge stand right now. Red has a quite a huge mass of skirmishers. They are as armored as he can get them. He doesn't have the Imperial Age armor upgrade yet. Now these knights are doing a fantastic job of trying to clear up all of the... The castle will stand yellow and red here with elite skirms. And the Mang and I are forced to retreat, and yellow... Red is living! Barely. The Mang and I is still getting lots of kills here. They got the death ball going on. But the Siege Rams keep getting chopped down here by the Knights. But again, it's all going to be up to whose economy is stronger, who can pump out the buildings. And green with center map control, as long as he's got wood and gold, can continue making these Siege Rams. And what a, what a fight we're seeing here. Meanwhile, Blue is fighting back against Yellow in the west. Uh, Blue is still going heavy into those 20 gold cavaliers. And Yellow is heavy into hand cannoneers and heavy camel riders. He does not yet have imperial camels. Which again, huge mistake on Yellow's part. Like, <laughs> you're up against bl uh, Blue here. Uh, is he going Blue arms as well? Again, like, you want to see heavy camels, and the Cavaliers are now in Yellow's eco. This could be devastatingly bad, although it looks like they're just passing. Oh, is he going for this massive or, uh, woodliner here? Maybe. No, they don't. The camels are going to force the engagement. And meanwhile, Green has been driven off. Yeah. What a game, dude. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting close to having post-imperial status right now. Everyone's gotten their upgrades, everyone's living their best life. So what do you do in order to fight out against this? Because right now it can feel like you're slamming your head against a brick wall right now. Like, I'm making units, but nothing's ever happening. Uh, firstly, uh, finding some sort of... First of all, have lots of villagers. Like, I love Green's villager count right now. He has 130 villagers. He's definitely going to have that eco going. If I were green, I would set up extra stables around the size and just send in, uh, I don't know if mm, the Mongols get the SARS? 
but like just light cab raids and focus on drawing the attention of Red somewhere else. Somewhere where he will be preoccupied and then you can go in with your main Mangadai Death Ball Strike Force. Heck, maybe way, even... Yeah? I want to point out that Red has 5,000 gold stock. Oh my god! He does have quite a few people around this one tile of gold. But that is all going to drop. Now, Red does have a few more gold mines in the back of his base, but... Again, if green does end up... Oh my god! I was literally about to say this before you brought up the gold thing. Green's castle here? I love this. I think I would have liked it a bit further back just to be safe. But the castle here to secure that forward gold? Again, it's just a bit too far forward here, and I think red is going to extend for this. Now, red doesn't know that castle's been dropped yet because it hasn't any progress, but look at this. Mongodol... Er, uh, Mangadol's coming out now. The castle is coming out. If this castle goes up, that's going to be a huge blow to Red because that is a big man or Mangadai maker there. Oh my gosh, look at the look at the Mangadals here brought in to go against the Elite Skirms. And there we go. They'll, they'll go down. And the castle will go up. Meanwhile, Yellow is still trying to fight his best against Blue as Blue's Cavaliers try to dive for the trebuchets. Oh, that was a big shot with that Manganel. Oh, yeah, Manganel and this is... Out the... out the yeah, this is huge. I think this is what's going to win Green the game here. Like, having this position right now. Now, Red is having emergency trebuchets. In response to this, uh, as you said, uh, Red's gold stockpiles are never ending. And it looks like we're gonna have Trev versus Trev here, and we're going to have a Trev War. So, Scout Cap here. Yeah, what a game, dude! Yeah, bullshit 2 and 20, dude. Like, Sarajito's playing great. He has the highest. Oh, no, he doesn't. Yeah. He has the highest. So here we go, hand cannoneers and camels from yellow. Such a gold intensive unit composition right now. And blue is still, like again, if I were blue, I would go skirms over. Oh my god, yellow! Camels are like your ace in the whole unit, dude. <laughs> like, please invest in more as red gets chemistry. Make the skirmishers a little bit better here, and I, I don't know, man. If the more map, that yeah, green has just shown the initiative to take map control here, inch by inch, and red has been on the back foot the entire game. Stones flying back and forth. Blue has a forward castle built now, but that's going down as yellow is doing the trip war. But oh my goodness. Blue is diving for the trebs. Will the left one go down before the cabins deal with it? The villager gets into a pair and he saves the trip. Holy shit. Oh my god. Another forward castle being built by Blue as he tries to pick up the pieces and maintain any sort of map control right now as Deathful goes to pick up the spoils in the mid he's now secured. Green's castle went. Oh my god! <laughs> But the Mangadai the Mangadai are in the range of both castles. The Mangadai, using their bonus damage against Siege, are dying for these Trebs. And the Mangadai are going down like fruit flies right now to both the Spurns and the castles. He's pulling out as Scout and he loses the last Treb! What is going on, Elton? Oh my god, Yellow's pushing forward. Yeah, Yellow's been pushing forward. He just took down the castle. He just saved... He barely saved one of his three traps right now, and he's got four camels. The Shalacha privileges from Blue is not paying off right now. He needs to go Opuk Spear. He needs to do some sort of thing in order to do... I don't know, if I were him, I would use my Cavaliers and try and sort of like counter raid, but like... Look how many... Oh my god! Blue is in panic mode right now. He's Desperately a freaking... trying to get the stone down. Yeah, like so many here. Like, still, and there we go. The next, uh, the next horse armor going up for yellow, and these camels are only going to get better and better and better. He probably just now realized, oh shit. <laughs> so green has a backup castle in place right now. 
And that's a big stumbling block here for Red. I don't think he pushed hard enough after he realized he gained realm. If you're Red, you need to keep the villagers up and you need to keep all of the... You need to, you need to keep pushing here, buddy. With... Yeah, like, look at those hand cannoneers. Nine range hand cannoneers, but unfortunately they are still pretty weak and, like, without the camo support here... He's taking unnecessary losses, and Yellow is having a very gold intensive army again. Like, I don't think Yellow has a single trash unit. I mean, they're expensive, so they can't be great. Yeah, uh huh? I mean, like, if you've got the gold, like. <laughs> Jack is fighting a little bit careful right there. And again, like, this all comes down to if I were blue, like. You've got to switch out of... I know you just invested a lot in Shalashi villages, but that is not going to work out when your opponent has one of the best camels in the game. Like, send those cavaliers to kill some villagers. Like, you need to get good kills here. You need to fight on multiple fronts, even though you think you can't afford it, because, like, there are armies on my doorstep. How do I divert stuff? Like, you kill villagers, you'll take the wind underneath out, out of uh, Chirijito's sails. Like, but right now it's on the doorstep, and I don't know if Blue can do anything about this. Yeah, Green is doing such a fantastic job. Red and Green have now gone at a slight standstill for the most part, as I, I uh, we've got the SARS. During this entire match, I've seen a lot of Tarantino going over to help Red, but I haven't yeah. seen anybody else go over to help anybody at all. Hey, Green says, mark it, please. Oh, and he pings the bottom corner. Uh, I think, uh, I think... Green has a couple things going on right now as his main TC is getting tread down. Man. Red. Banana, our hero Banana might lose, but Shirajito needs a win. Yeah, I don't care. This game has been fantastic. I don't even care who wins at this point. Look at this, Cherigito is taking mid control here. He's got the four archery ranges. He's putting more stables down. This is exactly what I would do in Cherigito's uh, situation. This is perfect. Now again, stone is so limited on this map. Like every castle has been worth its weight like five times as normally. As we said earlier, there's only what under sixteen thousand stone on the map. That's only uh, like do the math on that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I think if you're going to use a trash unit, I would definitely use uh, Skurn's, Skurn's uh, if camera. Is what Kirajito should use right now. Since Blue has shown a complete reluctance to do anything other than Cavaliers, which is understandable because Cavaliers are only 20 gold each. So you might be thinking, oh, they're such a good unit, but like, these camels are eviscerating. Even without the. Yep. Yeah, this has been happening for quite a bit now, and again, this is, uh, well, they say you sleep in the bed you make, right? And I think this is a the down point of not counterattacking when you're red. Like, red beat back green. He knocked down the castle, and red not pushing forward and extending further and keeping the unit production up. That allowed green to set up that backup castle there, and now green is, that's why green is still in this, in my opinion. And... Uh, yeah, we're gonna see, and look at this, Red has now moved to full crash. Like, he's only using gold for all of the trebuchets. Uh, Green is making trebuchets of his own, but again, like... Mm -hmm. I think... Yeah. We're going to see the GG here from Blue any minute now, and... That's such a pain because if I'm green, I'm like, I just play, I'm playing the game of my life here. As, uh, as L2Ob is getting the trebuchets in range right now. The Mangadai have to. IDK, how we lose this? Yeah, dude. Like. I don't know how he, I don't know if the green realized that. I don't know, man. Or do you mean how we lost this? Like, if I were blue, I think the problem was a stubbornness not to go into Obuk. Because the Obuk are there for this, almost this exact reason. Like, Obuk green camels. Uh, so, yeah. 
so like Obuk Skirm would have been fantastic. Or Obuk Pike or something along those lines. But again, like keep sending even though they're cheap, keep sending those cavaliers against those camels and oh, there's this the is what happens. Yeah. What a fantastic game, Helton. Holy moly. <laughs> GG wow, called there by Banana. And again, it all came down to Cherry Gito. Like, <laughs> Green right, like, was winning against Red. The, like, again? The like, man yeah. with a 9% win rate, and he played so good. I want to I wanna high-five him. Like, hopefully it was, wasn't like a... Um... What's it called? Where you intentionally lose games to drop your elo, so you... Oh, to Smurf? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Hopefully not, like, I feel like his early game, it, it felt about right, and then yeah. after it, uh, yeah. late imp, he just kind of flooded everything. Yeah, like, again, like, there were two separate 1v1s happening right here, but Cherigito, oh my goodness, like, with the help he gave Red to help him survive through Fuel yep. and Castle Age, Cherigito gets the MVP award oh, in, my, in my book. Oh absolutely. my god. And, like, uh, Cherigito knew exactly what units to make. He was like, Hindustani camels? Good. Hindustani hand cannoneers? Good. And although he had the ghoulums in the back pocket, they weren't necessary against the poles. And, like, he knew exactly what units to make. And then, another thing, he took the mid control. He stepped forward, and then he made forward production buildings, and then he kept the pressure going. And that's something his teammate didn't do. He did an amazing job fighting against Green, but again, he made space and he didn't capitalize in, on it, allowing Green to restructure himself in the mid again and essentially make that battle moot. Now, he did eventually push back again with these uh, trebuchets, but again, like, this could have been a completely different battle. What a game! <laughs> Only 2,000 stone left on the map. Oh my god. That's like three 11, castles. 11,000 gold still on the map. I'm kind of surprised by that one. Yeah, like... There was a, uh, lot, of, there was a lot of castle drops, though. Uh, let me see here in the statistics. Um, economy. So, Banana actually had the best economy in the game in terms of resources gathered. Well, At all points in the game, it looks like Banana was number one. And again, that's pretty standard for the poles, because every time they mine stone, they're also mining gold, and that gets counted there, too, oh. so I don't know how relevant that is, but... Uh, yeah? The, how do I get to the statistics? Uh, you have to click on the Capture Age logo on the mini-map, in the, like, bottom left of the mini-map, like, center thing, oh, I see. and then go to statistics. Yeah. Uh, huh. give, me, give me that line grab, baby. And again, look at the villager count. Uh, Blue's villager count is quite low. And I think that was another reason why he ran into such troubles. Like, number one, you need bills. Everyone else in the lobby was anywhere between 100 and 120. I think I saw 130 there for uh, for green. Uh, I'll tell you right here in a second. Uh, villager's trade max, 151. Oh, my God. Trade yeah. 16 by green. Yeah, I saw he was trying to get a market going at the end there, but yeah, like wow, <laughs> fantastic game. Uh, yeah, just major lessons. If you are winning, push. Uh, establish control and uh, remember that raids are good. Duh. I guess, although we didn't really see anyone raiding, everyone was really hyper focusing on their big battles, but like. Just a little bit of rating. Uh, if you can afford to even send, like, just... If Blue sent a couple of Cavalier, he didn't even need to send, like, a large group. Like, four of them. If he ran them amok, and look how unprotected the Northwest there is for Red and uh, Yellow. I was I was keeping a look there at the... There's a lumber camp there and just the emptiness, but that was a major wood line at one point. Like, all those villagers were unprotected. No castles, no towers or anything. Yep. If something ran amok in there, I think that would have taken the wind completely out of yellow sails. And, like, look in the far west corner as well. Cavaliers in there. That would have changed the whole game. So... Just even demo ships. Like, I think the only person who really had a dock was Blue. 
Yeah, and even then it was just for fire, sh like a couple of fire ships we saw that got fended off. Oh, uh, he did and... have some galleys back in Red's in the back of Red's base for a couple. Of yeah, times. that was that was cute. I think they got cleared up by knights. Yep. But 